button. Fuck it. Yeah. It's time to ball. Woo-hoo! It's October 31st, 2024, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen. Happy Halloween's officially uh, from all of us here uh, deep in the heart of Liberty Radio. Sticker weeds. Happy Halloween's. Woohoo! That's right. Smoke more of the Halloween's. That's right, folks. It's time Thursday for night. the 2024 spooktacular. Wait a second. Let me try that again. Oh, no. I, I already said, Yona. Bluffdale has. Spooktacular. There we go. Yeah, Bluffdale hasn't joined us yet. So. Oh. Yeah, the spooks have not arrived. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Maybe they're at a different party tonight. I'm not sure. So. I went out on a limb and I ordered him one of the Chinese pizza specials with hot dog stuffed crust and no cheese. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see what, uh, what effect that has. Uh, we'll also see what effect this has. Uh, might as well go ahead and get this out of the way at the top of the show since we didn't have like pre-show segments. You know, That's pineapple been, and mushroom too. It's yeah. even worse than you think. No, we've been, we've been doing, like, the party thing this week where we're just playing entire albums during the pre-show and, like, nobody's running their mouth about shit. Everybody's just enjoying the music and grooving along. It's fucking awesome. It's great. Uh, but that means that I haven't had time to uh, release this uh, Liberty Radio public service announcement to uh, whichever intelligence agency it was that dropped 4,000 plus casino games pages into the website database and then and then tried to hide them and cover their tracks in hopes that uh, that we would not discover them. Uh, we just wanted to take a moment to say thank you, boys and girls, uh, for the fine work that you have done. And please try that shit again. Because we're ready for you this time. Uh, you, you may not realize it, but you did leave behind tracks. So, uh, again, thank you for the intel. We do appreciate it. And uh, we are no strangers to casino games. Cherokee Reservation. That's right. Swain County, That's North right. Carolina. Come one, come all. Pull that lever. Not our first rodeo. <laughs> uh, but that, hey, that does. play stupid games. Win stupid yeah. prizes. That's it's true. clown world. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, Liberty Radio is apparently officially under attack, y'all. Uh, the parasite class has decided to declare war on your ability to rock and or roll. Uh, so I would actually advise everyone to take that personally. That's what I plan to Don't do. Don't worry. Uh, the factory is still open. Reality is still under manufacture. Worry not, folks. Uh, somebody's got to do it. well i've got a special treat for y'all tonight um you know there's not too many safe spaces anymore for the occasional poet so i decided to read a a little poem fewer and fewer these days um it better be good or there might be one less i i feel like words kind of lose their meaning when they're not used to have meaning. Um, yeah. And just like Kamala, I'm unburdened by what has been. But I ain't forgot, motherfucker. So I had this note pulled up on here on my screen. And well, that's because Kamala's not an elephant. She's a jackass. Yeah. Yep. The, the giggles part of the shit and giggles regime. Notepad. Aha! There it is. Yes, I did not delete that. So why did it close itself? That's cute. All right. So, <clears throat> where's the little um? Yeah, clip here. Okay. All right. So <laughs> we storyboarded this before. Um, this is called an anthem for justice by Margaret Anna Alice, entitled, Mistakes Were Not Made. The Armenian Genocide was not a mistake. 
Holodomor was not a mistake. The final solution was not a mistake. The great leap forward was not a mistake. The killing fields were not a mistake. Playing piano with my elbow. Name your genocide. It was not a mistake. That includes the great democide of the 2020s. To imply otherwise, to give them the out they are seeking. It was not botched. It was not bungled. It was not a blunder. It was not incompetence. It was not lack of knowledge. It was not spontaneous mass hysteria. The planning occurred in plain sight. The planning is still occurring in plain fucking sight. I added a word. The philanthropists. I'm sorry. I read that wrong. The philanthropists bought the science trademark. The modelers projected the lies. The testers concocted the crisis. The NGOs leased the academics. The scientists fabricated the findings. The mouthpieces spewed the talking points. The organizations declared the emergency. The governments erected the walls. The departments rewrote the rules. The governors quashed the rights. The politicians passed the laws. The bankers installed the control grid. The stooges laundered the money. The DOD placed the orders. The corporations fulfilled the contracts. The regulators approved the solution. The laws shielded the contractors. And the agencies ignored the signals. Ah, yes, the behemoths consolidated the media. The psychologists crafted the messaging. The propagandists chanted the slogan. The fact checkers smeared the dissidents. The censors silenced the questioners and the jackboots stomped the dissenters. The tyrant summons, the puppeteers jerked, the puppets danced, the colluders implemented. And the doctors ordered, the hospitals administered. The menticiders scripted, the bamboozled bleated, the totalitarianized bullied, the COVIDians tattled. The parents surrendered. The good citizens believed and forgot. <laughs> ah, this was calculated. Fuck that fuck. This was formulated. Careful this was focus grouped. This was articulated, manufactured, falsified, coerced, inflicted, and denied. We were terrorized. We were isolated. We were gaslit, dehumanized, wounded, and we were killed. Don't let them get away with it. Most of all, it was manufactured. That's it. Poetry's over. Didn't hit like a poem, but anyways. Where no, it, well, there's, uh, I, don't, I don't remember who it was, and I'm trying to remember who it was that sent it to me, but somebody uh, set that to music and then had uh, a very creative, um, I think it might even have been AI-generated video. It was kind of a, a video collage of everything presented in the poem, as well as, you know, other things that happened in the world at the time. Uh, and it is very well done. Uh, it's the, the audio portion of it sits in the Liberty Radio vault, and the video portion of it is part of the Tuesday Night Freakout, you know, dance party big screen. I've seen several videos of it, and I read the poem, and I liked it. And I thought, you know what? What a better way to to cap off a great night of handing out kitty, uh, handing out candy to strange kitties. Because that's normal on Halloween. Right. When the kids Any other come time the you're giving out candy, candy from the white van, and it's obvious that you work for the government and you're child trafficking again. Anyway. Right. I say, always, always struck me as strange. Send your children out uh, in, into, in, at night in the dark, uh, just, you know, around wherever in the area, begging right. for candy at strangers' houses. That what seems could go like wrong? a safe activity, right? What could possibly right. go wrong what there? What could go wrong? Just good, oh, wholesome you know American what? fun. You know what? We learned about it in the 80s when people were putting razor blades in candy bars. You remember that? 
You remember all that yeah, bullshit that they tried to scare hysteria. us with? Yeah. Well, now they put drugs in the candy. Some of the candy's druggy drugs. No, I think now what they do is they put candy in the drugs to try and make the drugs go further. But we get drugs all the time now. There's drugs in the water. There's drugs in the food. I mean, pretty soon. Well, wait a second. Let me, before I say it wrong, not pretty soon. Already, there are foods that are drugs. Really? Mm -hmm. How did they manage to get that through? Because you can put the drugs in the food itself so that you have like mRNA lettuce, mRNA corn. And they've actually been able to make that work? You can use and share pathogens by putting it into the food itself. And that way, anything that's made, like for example, with the corn, Anything that's made from that corn itself is still going to have the shit in it, whether you're eating corn chips or uh, cornbread on a hot dog, like we would call a corn dog. Shout out to the Texas State Fair in Dallas. It's where it was invented. Or as they call it down in Australia, the mythical land, they're battered saps. Remains the same. You take a bite into that juicy Halloweener, Coated in, in cornbread stuffing. And then the cornbread stuffing, you got that self assembling shit going on again, man. I wish I was making this up. It sounds like something out of a science fiction movie, except it's real and we're already there. I don't know if it was science fiction when it was written or if that's how it was categorized when it, when it first Maybe came out. Maybe horror film? Because dystopia would kind of hit under horror. But science fiction, too, I guess, if it's technological. Yeah. We're kind of in a technological horror reality. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. It's I like mean, Coke and Whores, except just about Coke there. and Whores. Yeah. Well, I mean, they finally, they finally unveiled the, uh, the robots, or at least the first generation of the robots, uh, that are going to be doing the work, uh, you know, where... Eventually, they'll figure out that they need people to control the robots because the AI is not cutting the job. Although they're going to give the AI fucking plenty of leash to prove that it's not capable, which is, is going to be fun, I'm sure. Uh, but eventually, they're going to figure out that they need people to actually control the machinery, you know, to, to make sure that it doesn't like suddenly start fucking hallucinating and, I don't know, like kill a bunch of people or something. And you see, the clue for that, again, is on a package of hot dogs. K-A-H-N. Con. Like Con's hot dogs? K-A-H-N. I just know how they, how they have but, the, the plans for the fucking circular economy set up. But you see, that is the acronym that is the default command for all kill bots. Kill all humans now. Well, killbots, yeah, because that's what killbots yes. were designed for. Yeah, that's why they're called killbots. That's right. They're they're not going to make you breakfast. Although, eventually, they do need to recharge, and that's when you pump them full of volts. Where is that car crash button? There Stop tailgating me, you pasty tea bag. Uh, for those that don't know, volts are available down at your local Circle K or 7-Eleven. It's basically tweaker soda pop. Anyway. Oh, so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's monster for meth heads. Yes, but it does not hit well on machinery. Because it dries up, stinks like shit, and then that draws everything else to it. Next thing you know, literally everything that crawls on planet Earth is fucking it. Because it's got yummy, drying, sticky soda pop water on it. Which distracts the killbot to the point that, I mean, what are you supposed to do when you're covered with fucking... Anyway. Yeah. So it, it is Halloween, Yona. I'm sure everybody listening right now is is curious to know what the Yona tradition uh, on this this most holy day is. 
Well, of course, it begins with smoking Halloweeds. Um, now, the actual trick-or-treating for the Yonalings happened yesterday. Uh-huh. And it took less than 15 minutes because they all came to where we live. And so all we had to do was go outside and walk around the parking lot once. All that happened during the 20, well, I was gone for 25 minutes. And I said, hey, I want to take the kids trick-or-treating. I'll be back. I got back at 16 after, and they were just coming in, and they all had their candy. I was like, well, what, what happened? Oh, it only took 10 or 15 minutes, so we just went ahead and went without you. Oh, cool. 10 or 15 so, minutes? Yeah, so that's the Jeez, new tradition. Where, where's the initiative with these children? Shit, we would go out for like three, four hours. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, literally. Like fucking maps. We were fucking crossing off streets and shit. It was called trunk or treat. And everyone had to move all their cars. And then all the special cars pulled up into the very ass end of the projects right in front of our actual apartment. They then popped the trunks. Got the DJ system out, set up the tents, all the people are there. And then, like, literally the entire projects all came and congregated right on my front lawn. Oh, right on. Some of them were even leaning on my Grand Torino. I just wanted to yell, get off my lawn so loudly. But um, it was trick-or-treat. I let it slide. Uh, and then the kids apparently well, only had to walk about five feet from the front door and then walk along a row of trunks of parked vehicles for about 20 feet. Maybe they took uh, as many as 50 steps from the front door back, and that was really only possible. Yeah, it it was just a strange... uh, It's not like what it was when I grew up, but apparently now that was the case when I was visiting friends in Huntington and elsewhere, that now they just have neighborhood trick or treat functions where all the cars meet at one parking lot or something, and then they're like all the kids get out where it's a safe, protected area, and all the parents can in watch parking what's happening in, in a parking lot. So they're doing that like the Walmart or at the projects, or yeah. each apartment's having their own Halloween social thing. It, it's like a new I mean, Halloween you know, tradition. And you know it, when it makes when sense. I was growing you know, up, can, we just can put on costumes, do your drug We'd deals at the same time, miles. and not going. You know, Halloween was only on Halloween stone. night. We'd put on our uh, outfits like we lived in Lyon Station in LaRue County. The good Halloween was in New Haven where there was actually city blocks and city streets. So me and my older sisters walked down the railroad track an hour, you know, almost an hour and a half talking like, Damn. you know, three miles to get to town That's commitment. and then walked around town for a couple hours, got all this fucking candy and walked the fuck back home. And I couldn't imagine that today. No, no, you wouldn't be allowed to do that today. Like a cop would see y'all and and like snatch you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they would have been hard pressed because I mean, most of the route from like, our farm even, to dude. town was like rural tracks where there's no road, you know. Yeah. But if they would have caught us in New Haven, yeah, we would have we'd be trafficked as orphans by this point. Dude, when when uh, when I was living after my parents got divorced, so this was uh, like 84, 85, I was living with my mother down in uh, Richmond. I think we were in, I want to say the the like the area was Midlothian, uh, but I could be wrong about that. Um, but anyway, like everything was spread out, right? Because it was suburban, like you had a mall and you had grocery stores and like all that shit but it was all like there was residential in between and being like a 10 11 year old kid you're either like walking or biking you know because because mom's working all day she doesn't have time to to take you places you want to go and shit like that right so i walk all the fucking all over that part of richmond that we lived in Ooh, this wasn't petersburg would not even think twice about it at the time but now do you think i would be yeah. allowed to do that do you think i would be allowed to have that type of freedom as an 11 year old child no and really if you're wanting a good halloween haul you're better off hitting petersburg and colonial heights or somewhere down henrico yeah, i ain't going yeah, nowhere you know, near Petersburg. you ain't getting shit up in richmond but maybe some bullets like seriously Unless you're north of town, you know. 
Which at that point, you, you might as well say you're living in the fucking bird. So are, are people, like, what is it? Is it the helicopter parenting phenomenon? Is it the, the, the dumbing down of the populace? What is it? What's, what's going on? Koofy has led to a prevalence of Munchausen syndrome. Helicopter parenting. I can see that. I guess well, best to yeah, wrap your I children in bubble wrap. I didn't wrap really keep up. Wrap. I didn't really keep up with what they were doing as far as Halloween traditions uh, when the COVID regime came in. I was because I've been I've been used to not really paying attention to it anyway, so it didn't really bother me. That was the whole well, thing. Not... It's like the whole COVID thing. None of it actually bothered me from an everyday life standpoint. Was, okay, well, like I'm none not of this sure actually when it affects began. me. But it's rather unsettling to me. And, and what I speak of is the fact of, you know, with my youngest child being put on the bus every single day, when going to the bus and loading onto the bus, and when unloading from the bus, one of three people who is legally authorized must enter the bus itself and sign in ink on a paper that you are taking custody of the child back off the bus or giving custody of the child onto the bus to where it is a formal exercise that requires a legal signature Hmm. to basically, in writing, we're basically conveying in loco parentis to the bus and the facility while the child is not in our physical custody. Now that's yeah. not the and case. It's all for, for the legal child reasons. It's all for school. liability. But yeah, it's for liability. Now the other thing is that bus that the child gets on, every single bus seat has an actual three point seat belt over the shoulder for each child. You're shitting me. But then, for the bus that takes my older child, who's in regular public school... Does it have surveillance cameras, too? Which, by the way, my older son, who goes to the public school, his school has been closed now for a week and a half because of the whole thing of, you know, the principal being stabbed and shot out with a gun in the parents' pickup line when school was closing the other day, requiring a lockdown of the school and all kinds oh, of stuff. Oh, so they just said, we're, we're just not going to do school for a while? Well, apparently there's been all these investigative teams from state and federal and everything else. and going. You know, I mean, there for the longest time, you couldn't even go down that street because they had the police tape up and painted circles around shell casings on the front lawn and stuff. So I guess once all that's done, after election day, or yeah, yeah, probably, was it, probably was it be the, after election day. No, because it's 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 not until the Monday after election day week that they go back to school. He does, but nonetheless, oh, when he so will finally just, go back they got to school, like a break. yeah, they got like a spring it, break in autumn. It's a Halloween break. There you go. It's a spooky thing. Yeah, hey, it's so uh, yeah. When he goes on his bus. Nobody has to sign a piece of paper when he gets on. Nobody has to sign a piece of paper when he gets off. Not a single fucking seatbelt on that bus, except for the driver. As is the case for most vehicles that transport children to and from school. However, don't get an idea that you're just like a bus driver. If you happen to drive a bus or a van full of your kids and other people's kids and have none of them wearing a seatbelt because you'll probably go to jail for that. But if you do it in a school bus, you can be the only one wearing a seatbelt and you can literally have 30 students behind you and none of them are wearing a seatbelt. And that doesn't matter because school buses are exempt from having seat belts. That's right. Also prison but buses. But anybody else that transports a child now has to prove to the state that they have a legal seating device for the child 
and the laws are different depending upon what state you go in. Well, because but it's the, the same state... rationale that they use for the prison buses, right? Because if there's oh, yeah. like an accident, they don't want survivors. Right. And the punchline is the state always exercises in loco parentis over all children, including all of you adults. How? That's right. What are you talking about, Yona? I don't understand. It's real simple, motherfucker. Get you a passport, if they'll give you one. Hmm. Then use said passport and get a job and live in another country. Then, God forbid, God forbid, you get the idea, hey, they eat better food here. They, they wear better clothes here. There's better weed and pussy here and everything. You know what? I'm getting these ideas as an American. I might just live like an expat. I don't want to go back to the plantation. I, I like didn't want to go back to the plantation. Up. I don't Are you fucking kidding be me, Toby. But I then, lived in fucking paradise. Right. And then you're like, okay, well, I'm just going to get citizenship in this country. And well, wait a second. What do you mean I still have to file taxes every year as an American citizen? What do you mean I have to keep sending money back to the United States? I don't live or work there anymore. Oh, you can you buy mean, your no, way extra out. Drive me back to the United States. For you can buy your way out of that. Well, I think it's like okay. 50 grand. Then let me just surrender grand. my citizenship. Well, then the government says, oh, oh, you don't want to pay taxes anymore? There is an exit you're, fee. Yeah. You, you, you're not going to pay Guido anymore? Totally, completely free human being to do whatever you want, American citizen? Well, there's Who an exit fee. Who told you fee. you could do that? There's an exit fee. And that's whatever we say it is. However much taxes we thought we would be able to beat out of you, choke out of your neck, and shake out of your pockets shaking you up and down for the rest of your natural fucking life. So give us all that money and your passport and we super duper promises pinky cross pinky swears we probably won't fuck with you. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Depends on on what's valuable 20 years from now. You're as free as you want to be. Now back to work slave. That's right. I just still, I cannot get over the fact that, that the, the, um, the managerial class, it's actually not even the managerial class, it's, it's just the parasite class, but they've been dropping steadily over the course of, I don't know, the last 15 years probably at this point, just little pieces of the puzzle along the way that if you're paying attention, if you're really paying attention, you you can put all the pieces together to see what the picture is supposed to look like. For instance, when they said, and I don't remember who it was, it might have been Mark Zuckerberg, but one of the, the big tech people said 10 years ago, probably at this point, data is going to be the new oil. Mm -hmm. I don't think... Still, I don't think most under most people understand exactly what that means. And I think we've gone because over it here on, on Get Fact when, Harder when before, you get too. Everyone to plug in. It's a constant data scrape, which mm -hmm. gives those with the most money the most access to real consumer intelligence. Yeah. Because everyone is you're a turning the individual consumer. human being into essentially an oil derrick, right? And for some that don't consume sufficiently, your credits are subject to expiration. So that's the best thing of all about the new digital money. It will only be valid if you spend it. There will be no such thing as saving money. It is all to encourage more and more oh. consumption to always be plugged into the system to always provide more data i mean every single person on this earth normally likes to wipe their ass with toilet paper and they have certain daily necessities when it comes to consumption so eventually there's only one place to get your toilet paper one place to get your food one place for your children to get their learning. 
one place for you to worship, one place for you to feel at home. Hi, big brother. It's me again. We see what you're doing, but the downfall of every empire is that nasty nepotism word. That nasty. But they nasty don't. They're not going to have word. to worry about nepotism anymore, Yona, because they're going to have that buffer layer uh, of the full technocracy between themselves and the body politic. Right. The, they're going to have that extra layer of plausible deniability to where they can just go look. It's it's the system. This is what you wanted. This is but it's this isn't us the, doing it. This is what you guys said you wanted. It's through the complete lack of modesty, the complete lack of humility, and dare I say, much lacking in actual intelligence of the ruling professional managerial class. That is their downfall because they want to brag, they want to boast, they want to speak so highly of themselves and what they're doing for the greater good. And so, like you said, it, it, it's like following Hansel and Gretel to the witch's house. Mm -hmm. Over the years, there's crumbs along this path. And it, believe you me, leads to a fucking cauldron in the woods between the Potomac and George Washington Parkway in Fairfax County. There's a strong odor of pickles there. You're on a pickle kick lately. I don't understand it, but that's Nothing fine. Nothing pickles like the tickle. You know what I'm saying? It's what they say at the... Well, I think, yeah, I think you mix that up. Nothing pickles like the tickle? No, 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 no. The other way. Nothing tickles like the pickle. There you go. There we go. I, I think that's written in the tile mosaic and when you walk in the front door there. Right on that top that of the might be. Compass. That yeah. might be. I'm trying to remember the last time I was there. It's been a while. Definitely. I don't go there as often as... I don't get in there as often as some of my friends. I think did I wait till 10.30? I did wait till 10.30, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, this is the spooky edition, in case you missed it. <laughs> I still cannot believe that they tried to, to sabotage the website. Oh, we're gambling now. We're gambling now. Eh, well, we're playing with house money now. So, it's all good. It's all right. You know, I've got the perfect music video for that with a uh, dedicated gambler at the casino that honestly as many times as i've watched that video it's amazing oh shit that the woman between on... that cell phone oh in God. her hand and that swivel bar stool that she was on in front of the slot machine i don't know how, how she, she managed never to hit stay the floor. on that how did she manage to stay on that chair one of the great mysteries of life i I'm, I'm thinking it was just like it was uh it's physics right like it was just designed in such a way so that you were gonna you were gonna slide down to a point, and then like I don't know, physics just takes over and you like lock into position and you're like you're just stuck there. I, I did notice, by the way, when I happened to find that poem in one of my poetry sites where I do the poem stuff, and then when I searched for it online, and I found the actual um whatever it was called um i don't know i'll i'll check my browsing history in a minute oh they already checked for me drizzle oh yeah what, <laughs> did, what did they say what um, is it oh yeah I, <laughs> oh, sometimes things just disappear from my browsing history and i didn't even have to delete it isn't that cool so let's see what it was called um oh margaret anna alice dot substack that's what it was called I was on Substack, so um, when I when I searched days. for it online, I Where? found that there was like YouTube videos and LinkedIn videos, and most of them were of this one lady reading the poem, uh, like on a couch and stuff. But I saw that there were videos out on it, and I I still decided to read it myself because 
I have my magic God reverb button on this mic, and and they didn't go with that tactic. So I I used it for extra emphasis on the important words, the words that win the hearts and minds that that fully modernize your Smith Mutt act. You feel That's me? That's right. Well, this is this is a uh, brave new world, Yona. Uh, you have to use brave new world rules. And you know, if you if you take enough boosters, you can reach the fifth level of stupidity or epsilons. Am I right, Aldous Huxley? More soma, please. Don't give them their soma. There's gonna be a riot. We'll have to call for the scoop again, like fucking. So, um, uh, speaking... oh, what was that thing? The um, Charlton Heston. The apes. No, the. I mean, you're gonna have to be more specific. Spartacus. Yeah, the. Um, Charlton Heston. Uh, the NRA. Soylent Green. Soylent Green. Soylent. Yeah. I was getting there. Green, and, I was and it turns get out Soylent Green was not weeds. No, it's people. It's people. I think we. I think we also covered this on a, an earlier episode. Uh, yeah, that fact yes, I, well. I did a whole Soylent Green movie watch, kind of like Mystery Science Theater 3000 style with uh, my home girls. Um, well, well, huh? you got wow. Me. Uh, Red Eagle. Um, occult Priestess. Ah, there you go. There you go. I so, have Cherokee names for most of my homies. Gotcha. Speaking of eating people, Yona, did you did you happen to catch up on the latest with Joe Biden? Oh, did he, did he already die? Uh, no, no. Well, uh, depends on which one you're talking about. First of oh, all, oh wait, uh, I heard. Yeah, um, the only garbage floating around here is all those. No, 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 no. Trumpers. Even better, even better than that. Like that, that was just, that was, that was the low hanging fruit of Joe Biden this week. He's that just was, trying to help Kamala's campaign out. That's all. That's right. Because everybody knows that Joe hates Kamala. Always has. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Did not want to get stuck with her and, and they fucking stuck him with her. Um, and this is, this is how he repays the favor. And then wouldn't let him re, and then he's in the middle of his campaign. Anyways, you were saying. Yeah. Well, no, they had the they had the ceremony uh, at the Whitey House yesterday for all the kids to to come and beg for candy, you know, which is oh. is the tradition of the Holy Day at this time. Did of he break year, out right? the big sniffer nose? Not only did he break out the big sniffer nose, Yona, he bit three children. Yeah, not a joke. Not a joke. It's actually part of. This evening's thumbnail. One of the panels is one of the bites. And if you pay very close attention, the middle panel actually shows you the two pillars of Freemasonry, Joachim and Boaz. And you'll know that that's what it is because you can verify it by the capstone above them. The live stream links. Yeah, that was your that was your uh, White House. Halloween oh my God. celebration. For real. I found I, I, I had to go over to yeah. the new Dick Sword um Grand Theft World Liberty Radio oh, spot. No, that's or, on the download. Don't talk about that. Oh, oh I, I I said Dick Sword, didn't I? Yeah. That's a different website. That's right. Um you have to bring your own loop. Um but yeah, I, I I'm looking at the thumbnail. We now. we have to make porn to to create revenue now, ladies and gentlemen. That's what's going on. Don't go looking for it. It's out of there to get corporate sponsors. I'm not going to sell out. If I have to show leg, the money's coming straight to me, and it's I mean, only for my you fans. you got to show more than leg, Yona. That's, that's kind of how porn works. Chicks dig the red meat. There's still carnivores out there. Well, yeah, he, he tried to take a bite out of three children. Tried to take one's uh, foot clean off. I don't know if you saw that one or not. Like he tried to put the whole damn foot in his mouth. And there you got Dr. Jill uh, dressed up as this fucking big frumpy panda. 
That's I mean, bizarre. really, it's absolutely bizarre. It, it's good to see the old Biden back at it because everyone knows, especially everyone in the district of criminals, that uh, Joe Biden has had foot and mouth disease ever since Johnny Carson uh, where was still that? kicking it with Doc Severinsen and Ed McMahon. You feel me? Stop tailgating me, you pasty teabag. Oh, my goodness. I mean, right? Well, wasn't Johnny Carson cracking jokes on how much of a bullshit plagiarist and fucking liar Joe Biden yeah. was? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's like mid-80s. That's like... That was um, 70s. That was late 70s. Joe Biden's that's like been in Led the Senate since uh, 1973. He's, Joe Biden Speaking has been bit, in government longer than I've been alive, Yona. I have a question. I made a song that features Olivia Newton-John and Colonel Saito from the 1957 Hollywood movie Bridge Over River Kwai. Um, I've never uploaded it anywhere other than the Telegram. Right. Uh, and how would I go about enabling you to broadcast it where I don't have to upload it on YouTube or Rumble and publish it. Uh, it's not possible. Not if you want to listen to it as well. Actually, I don't even know. I think if I play it through Telegram, which I don't even have open at the moment, I never do during a broadcast. There's no point. Uh -huh. It's just using right. resources. Um, right, right. I think it'll go out on the broadcast, but I'm not 100% certain because I don't know that I've ever tried it before. Huh. Yeah, and if I just sent you the MP4 and you played it, then I wouldn't hear it. That's right. We've been over this. Yeah, we've been over this. Like you we, can, we, we you have send been me, over You this. could send me the the uh, either the MP3 or the MP4. Probably the MP3 would be better on Dick Sword, and I can play it from Dick Sword, and the audience will hear it. I'll hear it, but you but won't, I won't hear, it. hear it, right? We've but if I this. upload it to Rumble and then play it through Screen Share, then I'll hear it, right? And everybody and will you'll hear, it. hear it. Yes, everybody, everybody will hears hear it. it. That's right. You know what? You have the full that's... media functionality, Yona. So I have the power like He Man, like two swords crossing. That's right. That sounds kind of gay. That's I'm because just saying. It is. That's because just it saying, is. You know, I, I, Why I do you think they call it a sword? Man fight? at arms, Orco, Skeletor. That was my shit back in the day. And then, you know, um, years later, when I hadn't watched Masters of the Universe Yona, for so Yona. long, did it, did it somebody never told me, Yona, occur to you that, gay. Yeah, did it never and I'm occur like, what? to you, what do you that mean they were all like, scantily clad? Cartoons now. And I was like, oh my God. Like they were all hey, wearing shit. very little clothing and like rippling, bulging muscles yeah. and other bulges, you know, on other parts hey, of fuck, the body. Dude. Like, like yeah, it was totally homoerotic. Gay, like, intergalactically fucking gay. Well, it was for... Gayer than alien anal probing. Right. It was for all the all the kids that didn't get caught by, like, the traditional stuff, like wrestling. Oh, my Shout God. Shout out to, to all the fans too. in the audience of homoerotica. Wrestling? Oh, man. Well, I'm not going off the deep end. I'm not going to say that women's are gay. You're wrong, Death to Tyrants. Not all women's are gay. I don't know. It's most of them. But, you know, results may vary. I do have, to, I have to apologize to Death to Tyrants because uh, I totally screwed up that video last night. And it would have been a lot funnier if everyone had been able to see, like, the first 30 seconds. But that's uh, on me. I have, to, I have to live with that. Well. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, 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 I guess. I guess we will put this thing on. Oh, I can make it a private video. Yeah, and you can play do it. That. Yeah. And, yeah. I figured it out. Figured it out. That's right. Doing it live. And then I can and then I can just pull it when it's done. 
and and that way it'll just be my it's shit. private. Oh, so it'll just right. be between you and the NSA and Peter Thiel. Right. Well, there's some content that I like to do on Get Back Harder Liberty Radio, which is just Liberty Radio. Otherwise, what's the point of coming I mean, and but- tuning in here if you can just get that shit anywhere? We want you coming back home. It's fine if you go out and see other girls and get drunk at other bars, but you got to know that the truth and the light is always on in this motherfucker like Motel 6, Tom Bodette. You know what I'm saying? Did you go to some fucking Luciferian conference this weekend or something? No, they came here. Mm. Worse than Jehovah's Witnesses. God, you you do a blood sacrifice at the, at the threshold of the door and it's still not good enough. Fuck off, Satan worshippers. Got my own blood to drink. I've heard all that shit before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great Lucifer and work hard and live hard. Yeah, whatever, dude. Okay. <laughs> you should be tuning in on Wednesday nights. Oh, yeah, that's the potluck. And you're always in luck when there's pot. Uh, that's true. Video. Which is a good reminder to everyone out there to smoke more of the Halloweeds. Woohoo! Try okay. to get at least one more of those in this episode. Because again, it's going to be another, well shit, we won't even be on the air on Halloween next year. This might be the only Halloween episode we do for like five years, Yona. Yeah. That's no When pressure, else is it going to no be on the anything. actual Halloween day? It's going to be another... Seven years? No, no, it won't be seven because there'll be uh, at least at least one, if not two, leap years. So that's why I said like uh, five years. Probably be oh, like awesome. five years. Okay, users, Shay. aha, videos. Now, Colonel Saito remix. All right, I want the one that says MP4. Say yeah, so. that's the one. Drag and drop. Bam. All right, I have to put a title on this. Hang on, let's see here. Um, title. All right. I don't know if we Video ever... Script. Have we done this That's live it. before? Where you publish yeah. live? Yeah, yeah. yeah this, this, this is not the first rodeo. I'm just extremely high because normally I stay glued to the screen during the pre-show because you keep coming in and out. Right, right, now right. that you're playing these albums the whole time, I just sit and get baked to the point that when we finally come back to the mic, I know I do too. It it it's I noticed, I noticed. That's that, all right. I think they're noticing too, but that's cool. You know, it it that means it's working. Um, upload, yeah, and all right, so. It's 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 getting almost to the point. I, I'm I'm just trying to hold back to eleven o'clock. We storyboarded this earlier. Not gonna don't want. I'm not gonna have the whole pre cum thing like before. I, I I don't want to get off too early. We're yeah. we're gonna be tantric like Sting tonight. We're going the we're going the distance. We're going for speed like we're smoking cake. There you go. Add trumpets, please. Oh, dude, banana cake right now would be fucking awesome. Um, but. So when do we when do we want to do uh, selection uh, apocalypse predictions? Because that's going to happen between now and the next time that we're on the air together. Oh my gosh! Do we want to save that for like eleven thirty, somewhere around in there? Yeah, okay. um, I think it's high time to throw out quarantine dream. <laughs> Um, you know, I did that song and the Ralph Barrick song and incredibly the modified ribonucleic acid trip Ralph Barrick MD remix was found by none other than the Sean and thrown onto the media monarchy, much to my surprise. Um, and so it, it went out on the airwaves, which was incredible considering I recorded that song the very first time I just made it up on the spot. 
and made up words on the spot and then never, you know, played it live two or three more times, as is the case for most of my songs, because there's no way to make as many songs as I've made and play the same fucking songs over and over and over again. I'm always making more songs. That, hence the prolific, the prolific, and then it is. It's, it's, it's. So, um, you know, push come to shove, had the opportunity to play on the grand piano the other night at the five star hotel. So I went over to the $30,000 grand piano and sat down and I was like, well, this is great. Make some extra cash. You know, I always get cash tips just thrown on the top of the fucking piano when I start playing because Fuck people yeah. drinking bourbon and champagne and it's the nicest, literally the nicest restaurant in this entire metro area. So that's where shepherds, cheap dogs, and Judas goats, one and all, come to um, frolic about as they perambulate this particular cattle fencing. So they'll come over and, you know, I'll be singing in Spanish and French and, you know, it's really cool and they come and they'll drop a 10 or a 20. Well, that that's not what happened the last time I played. I played the songs you're not supposed to play and sang the words you're not supposed to sing because uh, I was singing about... Did you play um, motherfucker? Yeah. Uh, well, nonetheless, let me cut to the chase. I was playing the long intro to the song and I looked over and my God, within just playing piano for about three minutes, the couches and everything that are all around my little lounge part there are completely forced like a dozen people there. Then I start singing the lyrics. Um, with compliance, it's guaranteed all the freedoms you'll receive. So just stay down upon your knees. All you have to do is believe that Pfizer cures. Boom, there goes 10 of them getting up and running away. Still had two hanging on for dear life. I think they put on seat belts. They're, but they're, 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 they're down for the count, Driz. They're going to the second verse with the Yona. Second verse drops. More obedience all of you, please. Vaccinate, stay up to date, please. Just roll up both of your sleeves. All you have to do is receive your Pfizer cures. Look back over there. Crickets. They all left. Didn't get a single fucking tip. Oh, that's a shame. I would have tipped you. Actually, no, I probably would have been like, hey, man, you want to go smoke a joint? Yeah. Who else is singing shit like that? Uh, I mean, there's a few people out there. It was, I saw on, um, on Conspiracy Music Guru's Telegram feed today. Actually, I, I think I posted over into the Liberty Radio channel, too. Uh, apparently somebody had reached out to him or put a, a comment on something, maybe a YouTube video to let him know that uh, Amazon music was now not playing any of his music except like one instrumental album. Oh, wow. Cause I guess all the rest of his stuff is, you know, political or whatever. So he's winning. Correct. Correct. I'm not looking for a record deal. I'm not looking to suck dick. I'm not looking right. to be endorsed by the state or the narrative. That's right. Nor do I look to be a part of its manufacture. Right. I've, I, I've tried know, to explain this to people before. Like, not doing this to get rich. Not doing this to, to become famous. Not doing this to be popular. Like, Why if, would if I need to get a job? you can't what the fuck we're doing here, like, again, this isn't the place for you. Why would I need to get a job manufacturing reality? I'm already manufacturing reality. Correct. How, it's like, hey, Yona, we're going to pay you to smoke weed. Oh, so you're just going to give me money because I'm already smoking weed. Cool. I'm down for that. More weeds, please. Sounds like a win-win to me. The body heals itself. Hmm. The mind thinks for itself. The human solves problems for itself. If you find yourself in a situation where you no longer can think freely, 
or solve problems freely. All you can do is get in your feelings. You're no longer living as a human. You've already been dehumanized. You are completely into the effective domain. Hmm? Dye your hair purple. Catch dick up. Harris Walls, 2024. This isn't the election special. We're we're getting to the election stuff. This is no, my long later. way of getting that's to later. it. That's like a half hour from now. Uh, that's nice foreshadowing, though. I appreciate that. That helps. That helps right. keep the audience engaged. I did promise live music. Not every show can offer live music. Well, but, but it is Halloween, so I suppose it's a special occasion, Yona. I suppose we will regale the audience with some of that live music of uh, the music that you're not supposed to play. And uh, I won't be mad if I get done playing and look in the chat and see that everyone stopped watching. I don't care. (laughs) This song is called Quarantine Dream. People didn't want to hang around for that. Wow. <laughs> and and I even mixed it up and did it totally different. Because, you know, when you're playing the song, you can do the second verse first. You can do the second right, verse right, in the lower right. register first. You know, Audience why play know the same different? song the same way every time? Boring. Boring. What's I the agree. point of going to see a band live? And then, are, are you one of those fans that goes to a, see a band play live? And they go to play your favorite song, and then they don't play it the way you've been listening to it on the radio, and you're like, oh my god. Oh, they fucked it up. They fucked it up. They didn't even play their own song right. Oh my god. (laughs) There are fans out there like that. We're not going to name names. I believe they're called Swifties, but I could be wrong about that. (laughs) I could be wrong. What's the point of going to see a band live? If, if all you want to hear I is I always radio, thought it was but... to do a lot of drugs and have a good time. 
Right. But I mean, but, that was but, just I mean, that was how I did it. If I, if I want to hear nothing but radio studio versions of every song, then I don't listen to the record. Like you're seeing them in the flesh, live on stage. And a lot of times the live versions are better than the studio versions, Chris Cordell. I'm just saying. Depends on the artist. Some some bands just can't fucking play. And it's, right. it's obvious. Well, that's the Millie Vanilli rule. Nah, whatever. I can honestly say I have never been to a show, uh, festival, uh, bar, whatever, uh, where the the band has been so bad that I've wanted to just leave. I don't know like how that works, like how I'm able to escape those particular uh, uh, shows, but so far everything that I've been to was pretty damn good. Well, you're really missing out on karaoke night then. That's all I got to say. Probably. But see, I'm talking about even like some of the, the bigger name acts. Like, I think it was maybe, what, six years ago, six, seven years ago, something like that. I went to see uh, a show at Meriwether Post Pavilion. Uh, I can't remember who the opening act was, but it was a double bill Old Crow Medicine show and Brandy Carlisle. Oh, shit. Yeah, and they actually, they, like, uh, Old Crow did their set, Brandy did her set, and then they actually did almost a full set together. So, I mean, it was a hell of a long show, but it was, you know, I gotta it say, was fantastic. When Old Crow Medicine Show came out with that song, Wagon Wheel, mm-hmm. it slapped. It kind of hit. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a decent song. But then... It's not their best song, no though. Fucker, it's not the best one, but but it hit. It, it it had a charm to it when they did it. I liked the music video that they put out with it. It was the right the song at the right time. Snake oil salesman. It, you know, it hit at the time. Decent song. But there's a problem. There's a real problem with that song now. And, and I blame that on those motherfuckers from Columbia, South Carolina. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Hootie. Darius, Rucker, whatever you call oh, them, motherfucker. He did this Hootie and the Blowfish country version because he's a country music singer now. And he did his own version of Wagon Wheel. That isn't isn't bluegrass uh, like a uh, isn't that country already? Right. But it, when he did the song, like it just kind of put a ick on the song. It's kind of like when Steven Tyler took a break from Aerosmith for a while and said, you know what? Get me a cowboy hat, boys, going down Nashville. Oh, Steven Tyler going to record a whole country album. He's not the only one that got that idea, Bobby Ritchie, or Kid Rock, should I say. Hmm. Why well, did this one country song with Sheryl Crow? I used to I work with a dude named Bob Ritchie. Please, man. That, that's like when Garth Brooks did his Chris Gaines album. What kind of drugs are you motherfuckers on? Jesus, man. I don't know. That was hilarious as shit, though. <laughs> uh, it just shows you how fake these motherfuckers are. Yeah. <laughs> you know? it's Let's like, pander right. to the country music listener. <laughs> all right. Well, if I, if I can't be a, a hardcore street rapper, then I, I guess I'll become a, a truth news broadcaster. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? Oh, no. Not the nudes. Nudes? What are you talking about? The no, nudes. I was talking about Stu Peters. Oh, that... People ask me what's more stupid than stupid, and it's... <laughs> <laughs> Stu Peters. Obviously, yeah. Stu Peters. The guy never had a Bridie on idea in his life. Anyway. Triple pun score. 4,000 points. Does he broadcast on Bridie on? Bingo. Oh, no Second wonder bingo we were never one able night. to get uh, any traction there. All right. Second bingo in one night. Son of a bitch. Where, where are the prizes? Keep cranking that basket, honey. What, what did we wow. win? Oh, well, fuck, dude. I think this is for burning incense in. 
What is that? Is that a Buddha? No. I don't know. It, it's something that one of my managers at the pizza place um, bought. Is that racist? What it. is that? Well, like when you put the um, incense in it, right? the smoke falls down and it's like smoke waterfall. Ah. Uh, for some Isn't reason, it cool? looks like a fat Buddha rubbing his belly to me. I can see it. If if Fat Buddha had like um oh what's it called? Of course my eyesight's not as good as it used to be. So what well, what's the name you of might the not evil want to demagogue? listen to me? What what is that thing called? The evil demigod. Another word for the, the demon overlord. Not president of the United States. I heard you out there in the audience. No. Vice president? Closer. You're getting warmer. Um, Speaker but get of the house. lower in the ground. Think Raven Rock. Um, oh, uh, 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 chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff? Evil demigod. Oh, you're on fire. Um, come on now. Evil demigod. Evil demigod. Uh, uh, I mean, there's... Orion, Kalina, Imperatus, Malim. Whoa, Cthulhu didn't even make the list? God damn it. No, he's an old god. He's not a new god. Evil entity synonyms. Jesus Christ, man. Do, I mean, do, there's, there's jinns, there's demons, there's... Uh, uh, demon, evil, devil, hellion, imp, monster, ogre, beast, brute. Oh, my God. It's one of the words in the song. Electro Rainbow that I did with Phytophiliac and Dead Fella and Dr. Dead. And now I can't remember that word. It begins with the letter D. And it apparently meant D. like an entire collection of demons. Huh. M for demon. Well, Demiurge? No, Demiurge is a uh, is an entity. Uh, like a god level entity. Something that is able to transcend our concepts of space time. But depending on, on uh, who you ask, apparently, uh, maybe not as powerful as like the actual god. Yeah. As, again, I don't know how all of that stuff works. I'm not familiar with celestial mechanics or any of that shit. So. Take it with a grain of salt. I'm, I'm very sorry. I, I don't remember the word I was looking for. All right. I, I guess it's not Demiurge. Maybe it was. I don't know. It's the lyrics that Dr. Dennis wrote on one of the songs that I did with them. Hmm. And there's more than one. There's more than 10. There's more than 20. There's maybe more than 30. I don't know. There's so many words. And I can't remember that one word from that one song from that one stanza that apparently meant all kinds of evil things and that's why in the video there's all these demons for like 15 solid seconds um that's where the word is said well nonetheless so, right why was it important oh i was just trying to think of a synonym for spooks it's after 11 o'clock after all no no i suppose that's right. You promised something spooky. Well, you see, it's getting to the point where, fuck, you're not bothering anybody. You're just doing your own thing. Do, 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 smoke some weed, whistle some tunes, like the seven dwarves, you know. And you're trying to log on to your own fucking website, and there's goddamn, what the fuck is all this gambling shit going on? What, what the fuck is happening? What has happened to the website? And then you realize the relationship is getting physical now. It, it's getting physical, Olivia Newton-John. Oh, no. I have a feeling I know what's about to happen, ladies and gentlemen. Bam. Yeah. It's uploaded. Oh, Time to go to camp. Hold on. I gotta, and, and the good thing is everyone, everyone from all five eyes is invited at happy time camp. Happy work time camp. This is kind of a, a, 
a, a snippet of the future. You see, there's oh, no joy. need for fences. We're we're basically Wonderful. in an island. Um. So let's see. I'm gonna hit play and let her rip here. Um, shout out to Colonel Saito. Be happy in your work. And uh, to all the Five Eye Nations out there, New Zealand, Australia, United Kingdom, Canada, and good old Murkistan. Why don't I hear anything? Oh, because it's on mute? Yeah, you got to turn the that? speaker on. Because Rumble does that automatically. Nice. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Video my car we are going to get it. Oh, it's good. Everybody stretch out. Get ready for camp. Very different color. Please and God, 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 please and God
triggered something very interesting uh in my brain with uh <laughs> with that video cuz see here's here's something you don't know Yona uh it is something that I had to suffer through as a young child because my father had uh, uh what does they call it a, a crush uh, no, it had an unhealthy fascination. Some might call it an obsession with Olivia Newton-John. Ah. Yeah. Uh, and, and was happy to tell anybody and everybody about it. Well, after my parents got divorced and, and later on in life, uh, my mother actually wore the exact same hairstyle that Olivia was, was displaying in that video there for, I don't know, last 10, 15 years of her life, something like that, <laughs> it, to the point where when, when I saw the imagery, I was like, oh, my God, that looks like mom. I'm wondering, you know. did she do that just to fucking needle back at him? I just shook the eight ball, and Magic 8 Ball says, my sources say yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, mom could be vindictive, so I would believe it. See, there's more proof, Death to Tyrants. Not all women are gay. Some are just vindictive bitches. That's right. Some of them are just vindictive bitches. Uh, like and that. other ones like to lie and, and there's fuck more around. than one. Yeah. There's more than one. It was wild that, that that it triggered that thought. Was not expecting that at all. So, um, that leads us to the story of the evening. We've reached the, the spooktacular moment um, where uh, you should, well, if if you are in the Navy or were in the Navy, this is the point at which you reach down and grab the rooster with one hand and the pig with the other and hold on for dear life because you're about to get backed harder. Grab those ankles. Um, be happy in your work, slave. Because you don't know everybody that you're even working with. I mean, they live in an apartment and go to work alongside with you and wear plain clothes every day. You know, I mean, what's a G-man got to do to properly reduce his signature, yet still remain part of the force? You know, and they kind of let it slip. Again, I was speaking of this earlier with nepotism and the whole um, 
lack of modesty and humility and wanting to brag and boast about what the fuck we just did. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Muhaha. It's a different kind of laughter. It begins with M-U. Muhaha. And yeah. So And it ends with F U. Right. Um, and then they push the button and your seat slides into a flame that's underneath the table. We've seen that movie. Um based on true story and events, real events. Um Signature reduction force was an admission, I believe, in Times Magazine. Right. After the, um, I want to say was it, it was, 81 million votes? It was 81 million yeah, votes. I want to say it was like, 2021. Yes. It was January, round and about January the 25th, 2021. Um, you can fact check me on that. But, um, I plan to. In that, juicy moist little tome that was tossed about they boast oh about you were so that. close newsweek may 17th 2021 they're newsweek. only off by a couple months that's fine so newsweek broke it and then times recovered what newsweek actually i broke. mean every everybody shares the same news but kudos to the driz for giving credit to the first person that covered the story Oh, that was just, that was, no, that was just the first, um, the first result that popped up. I'm actually, I'm, I'm looking to see if there's anything earlier. But nonetheless, um, by the time we reached the beginning of February, 2021, there was a slight buzz. I'll call it a mild head change. Kind of like when you're smoking green government weeds, you know, not really high, but Definitely a head change right at the beginning of February when a few of the shows were talking about that might have been hey, this week. What's this signature production for us? What are you talking about, guys? What do you mean there's umpteen thousands and tens and thousands of fucking plain clothes G men just spying upon the domestic citizenry? Hmm. That kind of weird. Oh, never mind. Let's just forget it ever happened. Move along. Nothing to see here, folks. But yeah, it did actually happen. Because uh, we're on uh, intelnews.org. Uh, and this was dated two days after the Newsweek article, May 19th. Uh, U.S. Pentagon secret army of clandestine operatives dwarfs CIA spy force. A new report says uh, the Department See, of Defense you guys maintains the a spectacular was going to be about the pickle uh, factory, and they all thought it was going to be about the pickle factory. Where's the button for the trombone noise? We need yeah. trombone noise. Secret boop, 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 army boop, boop. of over sixty thousand operatives, many of whom work across the world in a clandestine capaci- capacity with fake identities and manufactured backgrounds, according to a new report. Newsweek, which published the report on Monday, said that the Pentagon force is, quote, more than 10 times the size, unquote, of the clandestine wing of the Central Intelligence Agency, commonly associated with carrying out covert operations abroad. So, in other words, that's a, that's a way of saying that their focus is CONUS domestic, not abroad, like someone that's interested in whores at a whorehouse. They would be considered an abroad. Different broad. A different broad. Different broad. I swear it was a different broad. Well, I just wanted to see that you gave credit to the first person that broke the story. Because, like, for example, I hate to see Ryan Christian cover a story on The Last American Vagabond. And then other people cover the story after he covered it. But he don't get credit for it. You always want to give credit to the original source. Well, I mean, that's, that's what you're supposed to do, I thought. You know, that was like even even in high school, you write papers, you're supposed to source where your fucking ideas came from. 
That's what goes again, in the feed notes. Nobody a has note. a fucking footnote. original idea. You, you can't actually lay claim to it. Well, I'd like to think I was the first person to say smoke more of the weed. Mm. Check I, I mean, you're the first, and you're the first person with three that E's. I heard say it. With three <laughs> E's. Syntax and spelling matter. No, syntax does matter. It's funny. Um, it's still you, not my you know intellectual how... property because I don't give a fuck about intellectual property. What the fuck is that? Right. But you Ideas know, you know, you know how, like how uh, people who work together uh, will will start like kind of unconsciously sharing traits back and forth just because like that's what human beings do. We mimicry. we mimic each other. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, it, it's funny to observe that shit in real time. Mm-hmm. It really is. Because I don't I don't think most people are aware that they do it. Even animals do it. Mm-hmm. it. Animals do it so much that oftentimes on deliveries, going up on porches, just meeting the cats or the dogs or the animals in the yard literally tells me everything about the owner. And I, because, you know, they talk, I listen. And, you know, it's it's like uh, one, of, one of the owner's abilities is uh, like Cesar Millian. I've had to be a dog whisperer since the age of five because when I would be given the measuring pole and instructed by my grandfather or my father to go to the back lot corners of the house lot, well, guess what is sitting at the very back of all four backyards where they all join at one corner post? The dog house. Most city lots, doghouse in the backyard up against the back corner fence post. Yep. That's why I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Raw I sticks. have eight, eight different puncture wounds in my right leg Ooh. from being bitten more than once uh, by more than one dog. Damn. Fortunately, at both times when I was bitten by the dog, in the course of doing the survey, the most important thing happened immediately after the dog bite. And that was, we finished surveying the entire property first. Well, you got to get the went job done. went to the health department and yeah. got a tetanus shot. There you go. Right, here, son, here's And you're band-aid. fine today. You're fine. Back to work. That's right. Rub some dirt on it. Get back out yeah. there. And sorry, you're not going to make it to Cub Scouts tonight. We've still got two hours of daylight. That's right. Run faster. Make that money. I don't know how I got into that story, but you know, you have to you you have to read your whole surroundings. It's called situational awareness. And and when you can pick up the mimicry, most particularly in lexicon and in certain words, phrases, and acronyms that are used, that's the telltale sign. Well, that's syntax. Syntax and spelling matters. And, you know, like, for example, meeting people face-to-face in person and hearing them use their just normal lexicon, their normal vocabulary of words that they draw from to insert nouns with verbs and adverbs and adjectives. Who Remember diagramming sentences? Wasn't that fun? Um, ooh, I, look at that conjunction. And interesting how you're mm. phrasing that. And interesting your word choice. I've only heard people phrase things and word choices like that that are veterans of the NDA club. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you're wondering what the NDA club is, well, I would tell you, but it's classified. That's right. You don't have a need to know. Well, they, you signed that agreement. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sorry. But no, well, it. A very, How else are you a very supposed clear... to keep crime secret? It's well, not a crime if nobody knows about it. Sorry, right. classified. But no, again, growing growing up and living the majority of my life in the D.C. metro area, it was always very easy to spot people who worked in intelligence. All you mm-hmm. had to do was talk to them <clears throat> for yep. about the five same minutes. Lexicon. Yeah, 
same lexicon, same speech patterns. Like it was, it even that with the intonation. Yep, because it's all about mimicry. Mm-hmm. It, it's like that movie with um, uh, Danny Glover and um, Stokes. Oh, not Spike Lee. Mel Gibson. Uh, where they're using their white man voice. That's all right. That ought to be enough to find it. Nah, uh, you. I, I have no idea where you are. You are off the GPS. Sorry to bother you, Danny Glover. Hmm. Um. Sorry to bother you is the name of the movie. I think. Okay, all right. I found the movie. Let me click on here. Boots Riley. Okay, Sorry to Bother You is a 2018 science fiction black comedy film written and directed by Boots Riley in his directorial debut starring Danny Glover and a bunch of other people I never heard of. Um, but anyway, and they use their white person voice because they're working in a call center. And and that's what I'm comparing it to the gotcha. the, the inflection, the tone of voice, mm-hmm. and similar. It's similar. And honestly, like the only time I've ever heard people use things like, "I'm concerned by your tone of voice." There's an example. I'm concerned by your tone of voice. That's how my mom would talk. That's how my dad would talk. They both mm-hmm. had security clearances. They both worked in D.C. Because, I mean, if you live in Northern Virginia and you're living well, yeah. and both your parents have jobs in D.C. and they're living like well, 70% then of the population. your parents have security clearances. Mm-hmm. And they use words like poi polloi and plebiscite. That, that awesome lexicon that, that shows that you can have discussions with Princeton and Yale alums and Stanford alums and you know, you get the jokes and everyone's talking about Skull Puck and Geronimo again. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, back to the Halloweeds. Right. With the Geronimo skull. Nice. I like how you brought it uh, brought it all back around to the crypt. That was nice. You put you put a candle Very in nice. it. Nice. Yeah. It nothing more spooky than uh, fucking Geronimo's skull right in front of your dad while you jack That's off. Right. Am I right, W? That's right. In, inside the coffin. Go go bulldogs. That's still, out there like that. That's that's one of the things. That, like I I know that it's probably obviously true, right? But I'm I still just have a hard time accepting it. I mean, how do you think Barack Obama is allowed to stay on Martha's Vineyard? Because he's not actually a black man. No, he, he's an Indonesian oil trust fund baby. Correct. He, I mean, was, he was already his actual a, a dad billionaire that actually before he raised became him. president. And I'm not Most talking about Paul that. Marshall Davis. I'm talking about motherfucking Daddy Sotero. Yeah. The one that was getting little Barry his uh, Lolo. yummy Jakarta fried rice. That's right. I mean, he, uh, you g- listen to Barack Obama talk about it in his own words when he went back. The fucking Indonesian hang with the fucking Joko folks. Oh, I sure do remember eating my fried rice here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'll hear the same shit from Kamala when she's talking about eating poutine in Montreal. Where she went to elementary school and grade school and high school and graduated and um, apparently... Worked at a McDonald's that doesn't keep employee records. C'est dommage, c'est le chômage. On ne peut pas trouver les documents. Je m'excuse, mesdames et messieurs. Anyway. Excuse you. Yeah. Told you, every time you talk about spooks, it's going to get gay. Gesundheit, gar nicht Krankheit. I'm a bit schön. Ich habe einen Hochstandenschwanz. Verstehen Sie nicht? Good Abend, done, my friend. Anyway, yeah, you, you gotta love that. 
it, there, there, there's telltale signs, and it's it's linguistically particularly easy to distinguish when you see what sentences are formed and the tone of voice that's used on them. And once you know what you're looking for, too, it's mm -hmm. easy to spot. So, <clears throat> what would the purpose of a signature resource force be? That, to me, is the obligatory follow-up question. What exists? All right. Say what? And how many people will... So... Let's, what the fuck do we need that for, Drizzle? Let's, let's break Yonic it down. Confused. Let's break it down. All right? Because it's, I, I guarantee it's as simple as it sounds. So what is a signature? Signature is something that you can recognize somebody by. Okay? It's, I, I know that for like the folks in the audience that are like below the age of, I don't know, 35 or whatever, probably don't understand this concept too well, but there was a time uh, when human beings would use like a pen and a piece of paper to sign their name to, to contracts, to, to checks, to all different kinds of shit. Like you were constantly having to use your signature to authorize shit throughout the course of your life. Typically it's, it's to, to give you more debt to keep you, you know, that further enslaved into the system so that you can't fucking get out no matter what you do. Usually that's what your signature is required for, but they use it for other shit to leverage you as well. So it's your all the time you're fucking signing shit. Over time, you develop a natural flow to that that particular item of writing to the point where you don't have to think about it anymore. You can just do it. It, it becomes a part of you. It is literally your signature. People can recognize that it is authentically you by your signature. In other words, what I'm trying to say, Yona, is these people are put in place to basically reduce what you and I are currently doing, which is identifying the operatives in the space. The Precisely. signature reduction force is there to reduce the signature of the operation. Right. That's it. I mean, if, if, if all right, if, if people still need a clue, we're, we're trying, you know, it's like Wonder Twin Powers at the Hall of Justice here, okay? All I can tell you is, you ever looked at that traveling Gray Street on Tulsi Gabbard? Mm -hmm. Which is talking about all the fighting in combat and all that stuff. Um, yeah, they got a European version <laughs> of her, by the way. In case you Has anyone know. ever actually looked into what her um, MOS is, her army job? That's a um, military occupational specialty. She's a uh, psyops, isn't she? Mm hmm. Civilian facing. Drizzle, she, she surfs in two piece bikinis. How is your heart and your mind not one yet, bro? And she's on our side. She's one of us. If she surfs in a two piece, she is a fucking lunatic. She's just going to draw fish. And how many times has, has Tulsi fished people out? I'm serious. She's already on the surfboard. I don't know. In swimwear. Yeah. How can you say no to that? Isn't, I mean, again, I guess if we're going to really hit the important historical notes, it goes back to Herr Sigmund Freud. The id and the ego, study of the affective domain, sophistry, you see, how to intellectually engage the mind and then lead it to emotion and let's just stay on emotion. Who needs hmm. logic? Who needs trivium? It's all about the affective domain. Let that other side of your 
brain swell up and fill the ego. And let's let's find a way to make you a brand yourself. Everyone can become a brand. It's all about salesmanship. Sell yourself. Sell your labor. Sell your ideas. Sell everything. And and so Madison Avenue was born mm. with Bernays. Yeah. And and so all of a sudden, smoking is not not a yucky, nasty habit, ladies. Liberty torches. Descendant of Sigmund Freud, by the way. I don't know if most people understand yeah. that. The, the father of modern day advertising comes directly from the German mind fuckers of the 19th century. Edmund Bernays's uncle is fucking Sigmund Freud. Correct. And so, armed with this psychoanalysis. By the way, the family is still active uh, in business today. They own Netflix. That's right. Netflix and chill. Who wants to watch Cuties again? Pedo intensifies. But Liberty Torches. So where was I? <laughs> I think you were at Liberty Torches. Yeah, and I interrupted I, I, I you. would put up the uh, Richard Grove mind map here right now, yeah. but uh, we don't have that in our studio. It's going to have to use me brains. Um, but it's after Bernays that we see um well i'm jumping up to jerry mander and i don't mean jerry mandering like how your congressional districts are drawn different jerry mander no first name jerry last name mander m-a-n-d-e-r if you've never heard of him his critical tome is called um four arguments for the elimination of television oh. Let's pull that up I mean, you could get your facts softly, kisses on the ear, and sweet nothings, or you come here and get facts harder. Happy Halloween. Let's see. Four arguments for the elimination. I have not read that book, but it sounds like something I should read. Okay. So let's go to. Oh, I'll go to Wikipedia. Why not? Let's see here. Let me throw this up on screen. Book of Share knowledge. the screen. Blam. <clears throat> and there will be a link in the show notes for this for those that like staring at the words because they talk from the pages for them. Um, literacy rules, but illiteracy is much better when you have Netflix to chill to. Um, <clears throat> so let's see here. Four arguments for the elimination of television. Yeah, it was in 78 uh, by Jerry Mander who argues that many of the problems with television are inherent in the medium and technology itself and that thus was even before cannot cable. be reformed. Mander was, wait for it, the other shoe's about to drop, Drizzle. Mander was an advertiser for 15 years with five of them as president and partner of Freeman, Mander, and Gossage, a San Francisco advertising agency. So this is basically like a tell-all, like think of um, John Perkins' Confessions of an Economic Hitman, but his trenches were working the hearts and minds. Right. So, so what he was engaged in is a precursor to today's signature reduction force. But unlike ads that are on your internet browser that you're trying to stop because who the fuck logs onto the internet to stare at ads all around their screen or watch ads. That's why there's so many ad blockers, obviously. Well, in the same regard, in the IRL type cisnets, you got actual signature reduction force people that are basically just ads walking around, you see. Hmm. Clues are everywhere. They're walking ads. And they're selling you and mining from you at the same time. That, that's why they're, they're called cookies. Uh, so back to Wikipedia. Oh, and there is oh, no short. 
content from that whatsoever. Well, no. Why would Wikipedia put content from the book up there? All right. So let's see if we get any. Oh, well, what do we have here? Did I just find it? Yes. Here it is on screen, folks. Blammo. Four Arguments for Eliminating Television by Jerry Mander, former advertising executive. Synopsis and Comments by William Gross, Colorado Springs. What? So this is someone's synopsis. Oh, yeah, they do that. Text. They do that. Yeah, I don't need someone else's words on it. Can I see the words myself? I mean, maybe. Possibly. Blammo. Thank you very much, Internet. 1978. Who published it? Oh, we've got a LOC numbers. Blam! How you like that? Let's zoom in on that for people that like to research, like the Yona and, and friends. I'm not the only geeked out, nerdified fucking researcher out there. Watch yourself, folks. No. No. Some of us collect these cookie crumbs and figure shit out. That's Anyways, right. so let's see your introduction. The belly of the beast. Way to control the unity machine. The walling of awareness. Expropriation of knowledge. Adrift in mental space. Argument two, the colonization of experience. Advertising, the standard gauge railway, the creation of value. Redeveloping the human being. Commodity people, breaking the skin barrier. The inherent need to create need. Buying ourselves back. And the delivery systems, delivery system, the centralization of control, anecdotal buying, buying report. Buying ourselves back, like what Elon Musk does with the blue checks. Aha. Uh -huh. Sells your you identity see? back to you. It's fucking genius. It's absolutely that's why, genius. That's why I told you we were going to do this in the, in the um, read-through earlier. Um, but, see, we're, we're such good actors, we still act surprised. Effects of television on the human being. Anecdotal reports. Sick, crazy, mesmerized. The ingestion, the ingestion of artificial life. How television dims the mind. How we turn into our images. Humans are image factories. The concrete power of images. Metaphysics to physics. Image emulation. Are we all taped replays? Imitating media, the replacement of human images by television, suppression of imagination, the inherent believability of all images. All television is real. Scientific evidence, the irresistibility of images. And finally, hmm. argument four, the inherent biases of television, information loss, images disconnected from source. Does it seem like we're talking about Twitter? Because this really feels like Twitter now. Artificial <laughs> unusualness. Well, I mean, Twitter was the, the natural pieces evolution that fall of television. through the filter. Where's Shelly Olmstead? Thirty-three miscellaneous inherent biases. I didn't forget about you. Impossible thoughts. Television taboo. So, where are we going? Where was it? Ha ha ha! Yes, redeveloping the human being, mm -hmm. buying ourselves back. Page one fifteen, Drizzle. Ah, train kept it rolling all night long. Yeah, well, the gay kept type it rolling the box. all there night be long. Like a little box. Gay you just type in the page all number. Night long. It gay takes you right to it. All night long. Hey, Technology I'm Stephen Tallarico. No, now I'm Stephen Tyler. Gay kept it rolling all night long. Gay kept it rolling all night long. Whoa, there it is. <laughs> We're big Aerosmith fans here. Hmm. Um, bring your own loop. So, we have seen how the natural environment has been transformed into secondary, artificial, and abstracted forms. This process has been described as though it happened by accident, without purpose. I have been avoiding 
conspiracy theories. It is true that no small group could successfully plot to dominate social and technological processes that take millennia to evolve. Yet wow, at any one moment, some people may benefit considerably more than others from particular forms of social organization and the technologies that accompany them says the advertising executive from San Francisco. I continue. These will be the people who sit at the hub of the most critical institutions at any given time. They will naturally seek to consolidate their own position by concentrating their control while widening its effect. In this way, a tendency that may have been going on for hundreds of years or longer, beyond the range of human conspiracy, it gains power over time. And so this tendency, the the social and technological line of development becomes more monolithic, more dominant, more difficult to stop. Take, for example, the growth and centralization of energy production systems during the last few hundred years. No single human could have planned to reap the great benefits that some have gained from the evolution of wood burning stoves and the coal burning stoves and electric utilities, gigantic power companies, nuclear facilities, multi international oil companies. Each technology grew out of the previous one. At each stage, a small number of people occupied key spots and were able to guide change in ways that would concentrate the direct benefits in their hands. By now, the energy technologies and the institutions that serve them are so large, they dominate virtually all of life and even our political and social systems, while an exceedingly small number of people have come to control them. Meanwhile, other technological systems, <clears throat> Elon Musk, have also become larger and more monolithic at the same time. Transportation systems, for example, advance from horses to horses and buggies to railroads, to cars and trucks on freeways to SSTs. Long-distance communication systems have gone from telegraph to telephone to radio to television to satellite to internet. As these technologies grow, their power and influence grows with them, but the number of people who control them shrinks. I added the with internet part. In a capitalist free enterprise economy, that the controllers of the communication systems should become personally acquainted with the controllers of the energy systems, the transportation systems, and so on, and eventually begin to cooperate with each other, ought to be obvious and predictable. The fact that it is not obvious to most of us, at least not so obvious that we act to stop it, has allowed matters to pop organically into still larger and more monolithic patterns of domination and control at each turn of the cycle, affecting human life and political organization. At some point, we begin to call this a conspiracy. Hmm. Huh, you don't say. At some point. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Yeah. Humans get together and discuss how best to help each other concentrate power, but... The human conspiracy didn't begin the process. It resulted from another less personal, though more basic conspiracy, a conspiracy of technological form. The patterns of life, the social and political systems, the narrowing style of thinking about the world, and the technologies that both result from and foster these trends are the ground upon which the conspiracy can grow. Moving on. Damn. Let's go up to the heat of the meat. Yeah, we're running out of time for uh, selection and pocket. I know, and, and we, we, we've got to buy ourselves back real quick. I just wanted to give you a test of the best part. Please check this book out, folks. Looks interesting. Boom. Page 129, just like you, 129. <laughs> the last song I did, you know, the one about the Nazis. Buying ourselves back, the necessity for ever-growing markets, the need to create new need, the search, for, the search for nuances of artificial discontent within previous artificial discontent have required delving ever more deeply inside the human psyche to root out more subtle aspects of experience. Thousands of psychologists, behavioral scientists, perceptual researchers, sociologists, and others have found extremely high salaries and steady, interesting work aiding advertisers, like miners seeking new deposits of coal in the mountains, 
these social scientists attempt to mine the internal wilderness of human beings. They want your data, prisoner. They're coming for you. They're coming for your data. Hmm? I mean, they've already got it. It's no longer a matter of they're coming for it. They have it. They have it now. Over 60% of Americans' average time is now spent online. That's right. Data scraped me harder, Daddy. It's not even 2025 yet either. Think about that. They, they have managed to change an entire nation's consumption habits in the course of 10 years. And that's, and that's how they've always done it. Take, for example, DoorDash. They have conditioned and trained millions of Americans to pay more than double what they would pay if they just went and ate that poison themselves to pay for poison to be delivered to their door at twice the well, it's called convenience, Yona. You pay for the convenience. And the cancer. And, you know, most of the restaurants that I went to had all of these security measures and different things that are integrated into the delivery process to try to reduce the number of meals just being eaten by door dashers. And that's why a lot of DoorDashers get dumped by DoorDash because meals, the really good meals, just don't show up at the customer's door because they ate them. And oh, so now you have to shit. picture it. It's weighed before you get there. Sometimes customers can weigh it when it gets there because they've sent scales, DoorDash scales to some customers because um, they're really noited out about what's right, my food. Because the honor with. system works, obviously. And, you know, a lot of people are like, well, I don't care to order my food. And have a total stranger deliver it. But then I'm going to be all paranoid when I get here. Like a total stranger just touched my food. Did they fuck with it? Well, no, it's but them, I was totally them being to a total it, but... Karen. Because again, they think because they paid extra for it. That they get to put like their own fucking rules on it or whatever. Right. Uh, you know, but the point it's being, whatever. it's still fucking poison. Right. That was never an issue it's to me. It's still going to kill you either way. I literally what, what had the fuck to are you complaining constantly about? smoke weed to keep the weed smell around me. So I wouldn't smell... The Pizza Hut mixing with the Burger King, mixing with the McDonald's, mixing with all the different fast food, and it all just mix and forms into the smell of orange garbage dumpster juice that's leaking out of that neat little fenced off enclosure on the other side of the drive through lane, leaking into the drive through lane. And you can smell it if you roll down the window. That's why you keep your window rolled up until you're at the drive through box. So we got three minutes to discuss the election. We didn't forget. Voting yeah. matters. Well, Four is my, yours, Drizzle. I, I mean, they, they completely destroyed my dream of uh, Trump accepting the presidency from federal prison. So that's obviously not going to happen. Um, but no, Are I they going to let him win? Yeah, he's going to win. He's going to get a, a second term, and then they're going to uh, blame the COVID shots on him. Thank and, God! Uh, that's what I was, I was here. I was scared to death uh, that we weren't going to get another lockdown or it's, more uh, shots. We will. Well, it's it's going to be worse than that. Yeah, it's it's going to be real bad. So, have fun, everybody. Mm -hmm. Vote, vote early. Vote often. Vote as hard as you can. Or as Colonel Saito would say, "It happy work camp. Be happy in your work." No, they already started the. Um, I think it was Australia uh, yeah. started the lawsuit against the, the federal government down there for mandating shots. Um, and, and all of these lawsuits that are going to be happening um, are going to go against the governments because they've got absolutely zero legal standing for anything that they did. Right. Um, and it's, it's going to get real fucking ugly. Yeah, it's called the snowball effect. Yeah. But like snowball I mean, it was all in what was it was in spars was it I think it was in the spars pandemic it was that or lockstep one of the two I can't remember which uh 
lockstep. But yeah, all the lockstep. all the federal governments go bankrupt um, in the Western nations, and we end up with uh, global governance. So, right. congratulations. Well, you know, that's that's how you get rid of Adam. Am I right, Israelite? Or greater Christendom? Hmm. Heard that today too. I've heard it many times. Corey's all over that shit. Yeah. Shout out Corey Hughes. Man. We will return next week in part two of Hopefully. <laughs> Signature Reduction Force. It's not pickles you're smelling. Ellipsis. Oh my goodness. Say goodnight, Gracie. Dog says to the guy, uh, don't go, huh? We don't say goodbye. We say see you again. Kohi, huh? Later on. Yeah. Open lines tomorrow night. Smoke Good more night, than weed. ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's Happy midnight Halloween. on the East Coast, so technically it's not Halloween anymore. You made it. You weren't a sacrifice. All Saints Day. Hello, Congratulations. ancestors. All Souls Day. <laughs>